It says your focus on black American history is a mixture of unethical and weird. Okay, so this comment from Magnus Corbin, 5040, hey Magnus, says this B wishes she was white so bad it's hilarious. When my coalition gets in power, this will be banned. Hi, I'm Danielle Romero. Thank you so much for being with me here on my channel where we talk about American identity and family stories and how those things play off each other and uh, help us understand a little bit more about ourselves and our communities. Normally we do a little bit more heavy hitting history on this channel, but when it comes to identity, there is a lot of talk about who is what and why. And for me, my identity gets picked apart from all sides. I understand that's kind of the nature of being in the public space, too white here, I'm not enough white there. But the truth is identity is a personal thing and it's not always objective. And I'm gonna show you why I say that. And it definitely doesn't fit into the neat boxes that I think a lot of people believe it does. So I've got some comments here that really showcase what I'm talking about. So I wanna talk about those, but before we do, Make sure that you like this video and subscribe it. If you want to stay connected, you can also join my Patreon where I just launched a new tier for $3. And basically on Patreon, uh, no ads, no YouTube ads. I'm slowly moving my library from YouTube. I'm copying it over to Patreon. So I'll still be on YouTube for as long as they let me. I've had issues getting flagged. So uh, if you want an ad-free experience, you want to be able to connect a little bit more, Patreon is the way to go and I'll leave a link to that below. Thank you so much for everybody who has been supporting me on Patreon and on memberships and sending me coffees and sending me emails. I appreciate you all, I love you. So this first uh, fan, <laughs> um, I've seen comments on a few videos and this is uh, a thing they said. They said, white means European. There was some who didn't want to accept it at first with Italians and Irish, but it doesn't change that they are European white. I'm reporting all of your videos for pushing anti-white propaganda. Hold up, <laughs> we got a reporter in the house. And he said, it's clear what you're doing. And he said, when my coalition gets in power, this will be banned. My club is officially the best club. This is what, it was interesting about this little dynamic with this person because I never say anything negative about any group. Like I challenge someone to find an instance of that, you won't be able to because that's just not my style. I think that it's interesting that these words kind of just get thrown out. Like somebody might watch something and maybe they don't agree with it, or maybe it's not even that they don't agree with it, but they don't like how it felt. And so there's this immediate gut reaction of um, name calling. And so I always ask for the receipts. I'm like, okay, if you are accusing me of pushing anti-white propaganda, um, what does that mean? And I, I'm not doing it, I don't do it. I just bring the primary sources and we just kind of look at it together. So I don't know what anti-white propaganda means unless he's referring to the fact that I question what does white include, what does white mean? But I would say the same for what does black include? What does black mean? What does red include? What does yellow include? Um, what does Hispanic include? Uh, I think that there is a lot of nuance with these terms and uh, I like to point that out. This person also said that I was a self-hating white race traitor. I don't think I could say that three times fast. Self-hating white race traitor. Probably brainwashed to hate herself and her history even though every other group of people are just as bad and have done horrid things through all of human history. Okay, so this is another kind of like reaction that I get to some of my videos. Um, I'm not a self-hating white race traitor because white is not a race. Uh, colors are not races. And I think that we use these terms in lieu of other terms sometimes. They're kind of proxy terms. Um, but white is not a race. Now, if we're going to talk about actual uh, races, like a forensic scientist would actually did a video on this talking about skull shapes. It's like, do skeletons have a race? You can determine ancestry or majority ancestry to a certain point by studying skeletons, skulls in particular. It wouldn't tell you that someone is white. For instance, um, a very dark skinned person from India, a true Indian, would technically have a skull shape that was caucasoid. Would you be able to determine their skin color from their skeleton? No, you obviously wouldn't be able to do that. Um, and you know, people from India can have very varying shades of skin. Um, and some people have extremely dark skin, uh, but they would still be under this Caucasian umbrella. Now, actually there was a Supreme Court case about this. We talked about it on the channel. I can link to it below. 
Bhagat Singh Finn. And he was at the Supreme Court level in 1923. He was a man from India who was trying to get United States citizenship. And he was saying because he was Caucasian, uh, he was Aryan based on where he was born in India, that he could become a citizen. Because the rules for citizenship at that time were you had to be a free white person or of African descent. Those were your only two options after 1870. So this man from India is saying, I'm not of African descent. So what is white? Well, white is Caucasian, right? And I'm Caucasian, so I should be a citizen. Well, <laughs> Justice Sutherland said, no, that doesn't count. So here, there's this idea that white is a race. White is not a race. I'm not brainwashed to hate herself and her history. I think that's probably the opposite of what I am. I mean, my whole channel is about my family history and embracing it and, and looking at it. I've talked about my Irish heritage. I've talked about my Italian heritage a lot. I've talked about my African-American heritage a lot, my Creole heritage, my indigenous heritage. I'm working through all of this publicly and it's been beautiful and fulfilling and I've connected with so many of you through this. Um, so I actually feel really good about this journey. And I agree, every group of people has done horror things all throughout history. Um, I don't have I don't have any disagreement there with him. Okay, this next comment was was a little spicy. It says your focus on black American history is a mixture of unethical and weird. You have one relative that didn't even live as a black American that you used to justify this overstep into someone else's culture and history. Why not focus on your actual culture and ethnicity in its entirety versus exploiting black Americans for financial gain or whatever else is your intention? Unethical and weird. Okay, somebody's been sipping some haterade. Um, so I thought, let's go over and see this person's channel. They must be doing really beautiful work um, in black history and... Um, doing it in, in a more ethical and non-weird way. So I was excited to see what she was doing over there. And I went over there and here's the kicker. This person doesn't have any videos on their channel. I don't know what the overstep is here. And I think as a historian, um, and th that's how I was trained is as a historian, and I love history, I think it's very dangerous territory to start saying that um, you have to pass this test by how you look or how your family looks or your family experiences to be able to discuss and learn about this history. And I don't think it's ever unethical to talk about your nation's history. Um, even if I didn't have ties to these communities, um, I mean, I don't think it's unethical. For instance, I don't have any Polish heritage, but I did a video on the Polish experience here. I don't have any uh, Finnish heritage, but I did an experience on some of the Finns coming over to the United States and what happened with that. Um, I don't think that's unethical or weird either. I think it's just being curious and wanting to understand more about my neighbor. But in particular here, uh, which she's calling Black American history, um, I wouldn't be here without it. And so, yes, my family uh, was disconnected from this side of the story. And yes, there was a lot of intermarrying with other groups. Like I'm majority Southern Italian. This is still my family's story. Now I'm not walking around saying I'm black. I'm not walking around saying like, I'm your new black professor. No, like she could throw shade if I was saying something like that. But I'm just here learning. and I'm trying to understand my family's story better. And, and when we do that, it's going to start touching other communities. That's just how it goes. And that's the amazing thing about your family history is that it's actually not just contained to your community or your family. So I would encourage this person, make the videos that this person doesn't think I should make. I would love to see you make them. When you make them, send them to me and we'll talk. Okay, so this comment from Magnus Corbin, 5040, hey Magnus, says, this B wishes she was white so bad, it's hilarious with three laughing cry faces. Okay, I get a lot of these comments, like a lot, but guess what I also get a lot of? Uh, down here, uh, Joseph said, Danielle Romero's white Karen tears. So which is it? Do I want to be white or am I a white Karen? Do you see the issue here? The issue here is that whoever is on the other side of the screen has a preconceived notion of like, this is what white looks like. And guess what? Y'all aren't agreeing on it. Even when I'm sitting here, you're sitting here watching the exact same video of the exact same person and you can't agree. So which is it? Am I a white Karen or am I wishing I was white and it's hilarious? No one can agree because it doesn't make any sense. Asking who is white is a silly question because white is, is not a 
ethnicity. It's not a nationality. It's not a country you can be from. It's truly just someone subjectively looking and saying, uh, I'm putting a person in this group. But um, another person might look and say, actually, I'm putting a person in that group. And it's really interesting because if you were to have, um, I don't know, two marbles in one hand and four in the other, everybody should be able to agree that there are two marbles in this hand and there are four in another. Okay, that's objective truth. But here, we're dealing with something that's more subjective than I think most people realize. And I think these comments really highlight it. So I want to talk about this other person that commented on one of the Italian videos. The Italian video I did with Steven Cerulli the other day. And this is what they said. Danielle Romero, you do not speak for the Italian-American community, nor does your guest. I think that most Italian-Americans would disagree with your views. I'm glad you have discovered the truth about your maternal ancestors, but please do not pull the Italian-American community into your family's drama. And this thread went on a little bit. Um, which was interesting to me because I asked like, well, what do you disagree about? And they were basically just saying, just because you have an issue being multiracial doesn't mean the Italian community has these issues. Now, I, (laughs) I don't, I don't actually even have an issue with any part of my family story, which is why I'm doing this here in public. But it's just interesting to me because actually that Italian video in particular didn't mention my mom's family at all, didn't mention anything about Louisiana. It was just about the Italian American side. And I only talked about my dad's grandparents who immigrated from Italy. And I think that, again, this is one of those instances where people have just decided in their mind, oh, it is an objective fact that all Italian Americans have this experience. And there's no room for nuance. There's no room for somebody else to raise their hand and say, well, actually, my family's experience was like this. And I think that means that we need more of these conversations not less. But I do appreciate that person at least being polite. And <laughs> some people are not as polite. So thank you for being polite. Uh, it might be Iliac. I can I, Iliac said you are more obsessed with race than a so called Nazi. I don't exactly know what they're trying to say here. Are they saying that there is no race? Like race doesn't exist? I don't think that's what they're saying based on their avatar picture. There's a difference between like being obsessed with categorizing people. <laughs> And me sitting here saying, hey, everyone's too obsessed with categorizing people. And here's what's happened because of that. What I'm pointing out is that these categories don't really work. And as you start your family history journey, as you start tracing your family story, wherever you come from, you're going to find out that (laughs) some of these categories just don't fit. They just don't fit. And maybe it's time to say, hey, enough, enough with the categories. If you can't see that there's a difference between highlighting these classifications of people and saying, aren't these silly? And highlighting these classifications of people and using them to uh, commit. If you can't see the difference between them, you should hang around on my channel a little bit longer. I would love to have you. Um, This person um, I've had a little fun banter with. I don't know what they're all about, but I just wanted to include it because it made me laugh. It said, NYCM, why are you wearing a black man's hat? That's like the equivalent of a white guy wearing a black woman's weave. Okay, so I had to like almost bust out the whiteboard for this one and like try to figure out what's going on. So I had a flat brim hat on. Um, I have an NYTN hat that my husband and I, we wear these hats uh, when we're out in the field recording like for documentaries or for clients and it's just kind of like our team hat. So I was wearing my NYTN hat. Um, flat brim hats, I'm from New York. Flat brim hats, flat brim hats are not, they don't belong to any race in particular. Um, they do belong to Yankees fans. I would say that. <laughs> Yankees. Dirty Yankees. But they're definitely not a black man's hat. And the equivalent of a white guy wearing a black woman's weave. Okay, so I had to work through this a little bit. That a black woman's weave, we're just going to say that's a wig. Wigs are usually different. They're different than your own hair, right? I mean, I actually used to... Um, buy wigs because I would like I like changing my hair a lot and it never really worked but it was always very different than my real hair I actually tried to buy a wig once well I bought it I returned it that was really really like almost white gray and straight now is my hair white gray and straight no not at all but I thought it looked cool so even in this instance like a black woman's weave so what he's saying a black woman's wig doesn't inherently belong to people with dark skin, like anyone can wear a wig. And I don't really understand where this was going. Um, but I thought it was kind of funny. So I wanted to include it. Um, 
So this is just a little, like, this is just a little sprinkle of some of the comments I get. Now, 99.9% .9 of the comments from you guys are amazing, and they're lovely, and they're incredible. Um, but, but there's this. This definitely happens. And it was interesting to see, um, because I have had issues with people flagging my content as derogatory and racist. Remember that whole thing? If you uh, weren't here for it. Um, the word colored is getting me in trouble here on YouTube. And I even shared my mom's uncle's birth certificate says colored on it. Um, you know, we're using these words in the context of family history, family story. Um, but I definitely do not have anti-white propaganda. I don't have anti anything. Like, I just want us to all love each other. And I think we really need that. So I don't know what you do. Like, we have some anonymous keyboard warriors taking shots from their bunker. And uh, it's fine. I'm here for it. But... Let me know what you think. And uh, if you want to stay connected, maybe catch some of the videos, uh, ad free experience on Patreon. I'd love to have you over there. Otherwise, stay tuned. I have some really great interviews coming up and I'm looking forward to sharing them with you. We'll talk soon.